So Bedema had come to the United States planning to address students at the University of Maryland about Ghana's independence and what its vision is for the future. On his way, while driving there with his uh, assistant, who was an African-American, they were in Delaware when they went into a Howard Johnson's and he wanted to drink some orange juice, so he ordered orange juice. Now his secretary, who was African-American, had warned him and said, they're not gonna serve you here. And he said, why? He said, because of your color. And sure enough, they refused to serve him the orange juice. And he told them, he said, this is not the last you're hearing about this. And obviously it became international news. The U.S. was embarrassed. And Gbedema ended up being invited to the White House by President Eisenhower. And of course, the Ghanaians very smartly took advantage of that opportunity. And they, they made the United States aware that they were seeking fi financing for the Volta River project. Eisenhower put Gbedema in touch with the State Department and then with Kaiser Alumina. And then Kwame Nkrumah himself followed it up, of course, with a letter and eventually he was also invited to the United States. And then here's where the problem started. Even though Kaiser agreed to build the project and to build the smelting plant as well, to use bauxite for the alumina, Kaiser made sure that it squeezed two conditions, which was to its advantage, and unfortunately to Ghana's disadvantage. Number one, it insisted on buying the electricity from the government of Ghana at a tremendously low rate. That was number one, which meant that, of course, it was a losing proposition when you put, you factor the cost of the project itself. That was the number one condition. The second condition was Kaiser was not willing to use Ghana's bauxite, claiming that it was of inferior quality. But of course, as you also learn in the documentary, the real reason was Kaiser was afraid that one day when the project had been completed, when it was productive and profitable, that Ghana would nationalize the project. So Kaiser did not want Ghana to have control over the entire production system. And it insisted on importing the bauxite from outside Ghana. So those were the stumbling blocks on this project. But anyway, Nkrumah insisted on going ahead with the project, even though the World Bank warned him that the price that it was getting for the electricity from Kaiser was way too low. The World Bank was still willing to fund parts of the project. And eventually the project was funded. Uh, but unfortunately, the price of cocoa had collapsed before the project was completed. And cocoa was Ghana's primary export commodity in those days. It still plays a major role today in Ghana's economy, but it's not the only commodity that Ghana imports. Ghana is now developing its oil resources, its gas resources, and has been a major exporter of gold for the last several years as well. So it's not only dependent on cocoa alone, but in those days, it certainly was. So when the price of cocoa collapsed, Ghana became broke. Ghana at one point had $400 million in its reserves. That collapsed to a few hundred thousand dollars. So now, <clears throat> excuse me, Nkrumah is facing a challenge now. He's made up all these promises uh, for his country, but now his government is broke and he started feeling the pressure. And you also have to remember that this was during the height of the Cold War, the rivalry between the West, primarily led by the United States, and the Soviet Union and the Eastern Bloc countries. So the West was very happy to see Kwame Nkrumah's government being overthrown in 1966, ironically, shortly after he had opened 
the Volta River project. After he had literally cut the ribbons, within the next two months, he had been overthrown by his military. And there's been now uh, credible reports that the United States Central Intelligence Agency was involved in, in terms of being in touch with the generals who ultimately overthrew Kwame Nkrumah. Okay, so what lessons do we learn from what Kwame Nkrumah tried to do for Ghana? Number one, it was a worthwhile investment because the Volta River project and the dam and the hydroelectricity and the energy it generated, the country still benefits from it up to date in the 21st century. It also benefits some of the neighboring countries. And how do we know that Kaiser had been cheating Ghana by demanding on an artificially low rate for electricity? We know this because we also learned in the documentary after Jerry Rawlings became the leader, that Jerry Rawlings' government was able to get Kaiser to pay three times more than the price it had been paying under the Nkrumah government. And Kaiser would not have been willing to pay three times more if it meant that it would not be making a profit. So that's the proof that Kaiser had been exploiting, literally extorting Ghana for all those years. So now, what are the other lessons? The other lesson is this. African countries will continue exporting raw commodities to the industrialized world at a relatively cheap price while continuing to, to import relatively expensive manufactured items. African countries cannot industrialize under these conditions. And Nkrumah had warned that the only way that Africans African countries can protect their resources and use their resources to benefit African countries and to industrialize was to unite, form a United States of Africa, because that way they would have one military structure, they would have one currency, they would have one national army, meaning these countries could not be taking advantage of African countries anymore. There would be a United States of Africa. That ultimately it's still the solution. But there is some progress. There's some steps in the right direction now. The African Continental Free Trade Area, which is based on the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, is set to launch in July. And ultimately, this will eliminate many of the barriers that currently restrict trade, intra-African trade, trade between and amongst African countries. And once this becomes operational, at some point, it's been estimated that it will uplift production by up to 30% and also increase industrialization in Africa. But that is only a partial solution. Ultimately, there will still be need for a political union, which would be an in a vindication and a confirmation of Nkrumah's vision and what he called for and what he articulated in an excellent manner in his book, Neo-Colonialism, The Last Stage of Imperialism. So students, I look forward to reading your own points on Blackboard. I will send you instructions on how to post your points on Blackboard. I look forward to our second meeting next week, our next digital meeting. Remember, take all necessary precautions to ensure that you maintain your health as well as that of your family. Stay strong, students.